I'd like to introduce Dermot Ryan, one of the organising committee for the 1983 world record attempt. Hello Dermot. Hello Michael. Dermot, your training all done now, how do you feel just before the off? Oh, we feel very well Michael, uh, full of anticipation and hope that we're going to make a, a good effort at this record. Tell me this Dermot, where did this all begin? It began Michael way, way back in the early days of first services. It began in the States in actual fact where before they became motorised, where fire brigades had to push their appliances to fires, and different brigades raced each other to fires, and rivalry became, became great. And then in their off-duty hours, they used to actually compete against one another, pushing these particular type of fire appliances. In the modern days, they use uh, fairly modern machines now, and they just uh, race it for fun and pleasure. Now, for the benefit of those people who don't know what the record is, what is the actual record? The record is for pushing a fire pump, portable fire pump, in excess of half a ton. You have to push it as far as you can within 24 hours, and you can only use 32 men. You're confined to using 32 men any way you can. It's as simple as that. Yes, now the fire brigade has got involved in a lot of things. How did they get involved in this? In 1976, I think it was, Michael, another colleague of ours, Danny Fitzpatrick and myself, we were asked to go out onto the Dublin Belfast Road and meet Belfast Fire Brigade, who were making an attempt at this record. We'd heard nothing about it up to this. And we went out in the early hours of the morning uh, to meet them somewhere beyond Balbriggan and help them in along the route and uh, help them with a bit of traffic and things like that. And coming in along the way, Danny was talking about this particular thing and we got into talking and he suggested that we might make an attempt at it. And we hemmed and hawed about it, and eventually, by the end of the journey, we decided that we'd put it to the lads in the fire brigade and see what sort of a response we got. And funnily enough, they went for it in a big way, and that's how the Dublin Fire Brigade got involved in it. I see. Now tell me this, Dermot, um, your last attempt, what type of mileage and time did you do? On our first attempt, we uh, put up 168.5 miles, and we'd done that in 23 hours, 55 minutes. And we got ourselves an entry in the Guinness Book of Records for 78, 79. And uh, it was a nice little feather to get into the Fire Brigade's cap. I see. Now, you went to Cork the last time. Why did you decide to stay in Dublin this time? Well, we decided to stay in Dublin this time, Michael, because uh, the last time when we went to Cork, we encountered all sorts of problems like hills, wind, and uh, you might feel that everybody says you go down to Cork. Well, after we'd done the trip, we feel that you go up to Cork, Michael. The real reason we stayed in Dublin was because we were able to pick our own route and uh, hopefully we will be able to use all the fire stations. We've decided on passing as many fire stations as we can and uh, use all the men that are in the fire stations and hopefully they'll give us as much help as they can. I know they'll give us as much help as they can. Everybody is behind us in this. Um, we, if there's a strong wind, for instance, Michael, if you go around in a circle around the city, at some stage or another, you're going to have your back into the wind and uh, in that way you're going to alleviate some of the problems. Yes, I see. And now, uh, your charities, uh, I'm very inter interested in this. How did you decide on what charity to pick? that would benefit from this? Uh, charities, well, this time, Michael, we picked on a charity that we hoped would have us, well, we hoped was put as much work into it as we were going to do. We didn't want to be bogged down with just trying to raise money on our own. And we tried to pick charities that sort of had already fundraising committees themselves. And the first charity that uh, was suggested to us was the Richmond Hospital, because you know yourself through the accident service that the Richmond Hospital has a tremendous reputation and a great association with the fire brigade. We get on very, very well with them in the Richmond Hospital. And we decided to do it for the Richmond Hospital. And then somebody suggested that we should do it for Temple Street Hospital. And again, good association with them. And then somebody suggested we do it with Stewart's. And we had to draw the line somewhere. So what we've done is we had a look at all three. And after we had a look at the three of them, it was very, very hard to decide between them. So in order not to disappoint anybody, we picked all three, and uh, that's who we're doing it for. We're doing it for all three hospitals this time. Uh, what was your biggest problem now you encountered during your training? The biggest problems? Well, we had all sorts of problems, Michael, during training. We had injury problems, we had uh, weather problems, we had uh, all sorts of little needly little things that crept up but I feel and I'm sure everybody else feels that the biggest problem we had was trying to pick the 32 men 
We no problem picking the 32 men. The problem was uh, who, were we, who was going to be left out. Because remember that these fellas start training last January and they've put in six months hard training. And it's very, very difficult to come along and say to somebody, I'm sorry, you're not good enough for the team. It's not that they weren't good enough, it's just that the fella in front of them was just that bit better. Each man got the opportunity of picking uh, the team himself and we sort of added up the score and came out with 32 men. Now, don't get the impression that they were left out altogether. They were not left out because there's a backup team that helped us all along the way. And they're equally as important, if not more important, than the pushing team themselves. Because without the backup team, Michael, we can go nowhere. We are just wasting our time. So um, that's actually how the team... That was one of our biggest problems that we had. Dermot Ryan, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Here we are, Dermot, coming up the main park road now. Talk to me about this. This is just before the start, uh, Michael. We were just sort of warming up and zeroing in the tachograph. There's Ernie Sweeney there. Ernie was injured there and just couldn't make the trip. He withdrew himself. This is up at the park, uh, just at the start. And we have Father Cleary and Father McKenna. Father McKenna from Dominic Street there. He's just about to bless the pump. Father Cleary is, uh, as you know, from Bally Farmer. He's been sick and it's nice to see him out. A few well-known faces there. You'll notice there's Bill Raymond in the background and a few uh, of the serving members there, also John Lestrange and Phil Daly also there. You got support from everywhere here, dammit, above and below. We did indeed, and the past members as well come out to give us a little bit of support here. And we needed all the help we could get here. It was just as well to get the priest to bless the pump because we had a trouble-free run, no problems whatsoever, uh, with regards to accidents anyway. The teams look very sharp, the training has paid off. Yeah, everything is ready to go now, so that's about it, Michael, now before the start. Dermot Ryan, captain of the uh, pump pulling team for the Dublin Fire Brigade. Uh, many, what type of mileage are you going to do, Dermot? Well, we're hoping to get around 200 miles, please God. We started training last January and we've put everything into it, so let's hope that all the efforts that we put into it now become fruitful and we'll actually reach our target. As long as we get over 8, 184 miles, we'll be quite happy. We set our tie ourselves to the target of uh, 200 Hello, miles. this is pump push car and control. And the, uh, the gear over there, I feel that we'll make it okay, no problems. I'm very confident. Roughly what type of mileage will you be doing, like per uh, minute per mile? We hope, we hope to average about seven minutes per mile, and if we can average... Would you ring number five mile, station and find out if there was a message left there for Pat McCann, please, over. 26 miles, and he'll get 54, 56 minutes of an interval between each mile that he pushed, but overall he'll push about 26 miles. So good marathon, because this time it's going to take 24 hours, not like your marathon where you used to do it for three hours. <laughs> very, very good, very good. And what type of money are you hoping to raise we're for hoping, charity? We're hoping, hopefully, the fire brigade will raise themselves with £10,000. We're hoping to husbands ourselves to touch on a hundred thousand quid. That's nice fantastic. Money, isn't it? Great. On the yeah, best of luck to you, Dermot. Thanks very much. From everybody. Thanks. And thanks oh, everybody yeah. else there. Okay. Well, here we are now, Dermot. Motorcycles ready to go. Yes, Michael. This is about, uh, about three or four minutes before the start there. Some very well-known faces there. You have uh, Brendan Grace and Father Cleary up on the back of his bike there. Brendan actually went for about uh, ten miles of the journey. And I think he enjoyed it more than we did. He's very good for this sort of thing. He's always out for charitable runs. Yeah, he's quite good. He loves it. Uh, it's a big Lincoln big bike of his, 13,000 cc or 1,300 cc. That's Stan Brown, the uh, Lord Mayor, just about to start the race there. We're about um, five seconds from the start there now. We're just ready to go. There it is moving off now, Michael. You'll see six men on the team in actual fact starting off. We just wanted to get a bit of a momentum. As soon as we went down the road a bit, uh, the three men dropped off and we continued on. This is coming up the main park road. Now, Dermot, uh, the change over here, I am very interested in this, and I'm sure everybody else is. Could you explain this? Well, you'll see two lads in the front there that they were actually pushing. Right behind them, there's two other bars that's only needed when you're actually pushing up hills and things. But as they come up to the change over, you'll notice that the two front men drop back to the two bars right behind them. And this actually makes room for the two men that's actually going to take over and in that way it will help to avoid any accidents. One of the most dangerous parts of the whole push was when we were changing over and we worked on this fairly hard and uh, had lots of practice at it. You get a practical demonstration of it is there they are now dropping back to the back and now you'll see the new team take over and they'll have plenty of room to move in. There's Tommy Doyle just moving in there now. Very successful there. Big 
grave. Ah, get out of some of the lads. The pump is about two miles back. Uh, some of the nurses and some of the other things you'll see coming up now shortly. Uh, it's Paul Keating. He was in charge of the chase car at the time. Done a very good job with it too. See Jim Sargent there heading towards the ambulance. Yeah. Jim lost five stone on this trip. I can hear the noise of the nurses van coming up now. There they are in the Volkswagen van. They're all from Stewart's Hospital and all that. Oh, sorry. Right lads, give us a wave. Cheers, I'm on our way. Hello, Paul. Hey, Paddy. How are we doing now? It's right, lads, yeah? We're right. Right, Charlie, yeah? You're okay. We're in for a change factor, are we? You want to break that? Break the carry. We can do it. Oranges. 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 We're out here in Clontarf at the moment. How do you feel where things are going? Are we ahead of schedule or behind schedule? Well, if you could reverse the camera around, you'd just see all the happy faces there in the back of the bus. We're over the moon. We're 10 minutes ahead at the 17 mile mark, and if we can keep this up, we should, uh, we should make about 220 miles at this rate. But uh, there's a long way to go yet. We have to go through the, the night now, and everything, every, everything to go for, so we're, we're very enthusiastic at this stage. How's the organisation working out? How's the public and the traffic and so on helping? Uh, the public are fantastic. Everything is working uh, according to plan. We've come up against no major problems at the moment. Uh, a few little uh, tight squeezes, a bit of traffic here and there, but, but on the whole, we're having a, a great time and everything is working out fine. Thanks, Dermot. Jim, uh, you're one of the heavy gang here and one of the lads that helps them push up the hill and one of the veterans. How do you feel at this stage? Are you going to break this record or have we a chance of breaking further records? Oh yes, I feel very confident at the moment. We're doing very well at the moment. How's the spirit of the lads? Great, the uh, morale is excellent. At this stage? At this stage. At the Just moment. a matter of waiting and see. Exactly. Turn the video on getting out the bridge. Oh, shit, get out more of that stuff. Come on. Excuse that last place. Can you go out there? Anybody wants a pit stop? A push stop. How are we doing? A big wave, lads! <laughs> 